This is a video on um, DNA structure. On um, it corresponds to 3.3 .3 in your textbook. Um, and what I've done here in green is written, I've written down a couple of uh, things that you need to be able to do from this section. So you need to outline. Um, sorry about that. The structure of DNA nucleotide, the covalent bonds between nucleotides. Explain. Sorry about that. Um, dad duty called. All right, so all is well now in the Patel household. So back to, uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. So I think, um, so what I want you to make sure you know is what the command terms mean and what you need to be able to do with this information. Because what I see time and time again, and you, I think, have experienced this now, is that you know the material, you know the details of the material, but you're not putting the information together in the way that IB wants you to do it. And... Um, it's always surprising because everything is laid out for you, the command terms are laid out for you. It's a matter of knowing what the command terms are telling you you need to do with the information. So let's go and get started. Um, but let me just point out I added one to the bottom. Um, we're going to be able to draw and label a simple diagram of the molecular structure of RNA. You are responsible for this, and we'll do this together, but you are responsible for this even though it's not one of the IB command statements, but by doing this, it helps me understand and know that you can do the one right above it, which is drawing a label a simple diagram of the DNA, of the molecular structure of DNA. And students typically struggle with this because they don't know which model they're supposed to draw. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the structure of a DNA nucleotide. So I would make sure you have this copied in your notes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about this. So if you're asked to outline this, you need to be able to talk about several parts. Um, what's here in red is what we call the phosphate group. Now know that it's called the phosphate group because of this P right here. Um, so this is the phosphate group. Um, we also have phosphate groups in other molecules like ATP, which we'll talk about soon, um, actually very soon. But we've got this phosphate group here, um, and we've also got this other group here, which you might recognize because of the ring structure as a sugar, and it actually is. And in, because this is DNA, um, we know that this is actually deoxyribose. Um, and what's interesting about this deoxyribose is that it looks actually very structurally similar um, to ribose, which you are responsible for knowing, um, but it's not quite. And the difference is going to is actually not with the carbons because they're both five carbon sugars, but the things that come off of the carbons. And so a couple of things that we should uh, make sure that we know is that carbon actually has four bonds, uh, can make four bonds. So if we look at this carbon right here, um, we actually see this diagram showing only three bonds, one, two, and three. And this carbon can make four. So we're not accounting for the other bonds when we talk about this structure. And that's typically because it's not um, typically very interesting when we look at the structure of this sugar. Um, what the other bonds are that are hidden, that doesn't mean they're not there, we're just not highlighting them in this model, um, are usually to hydrogens or hydroxyl groups, which are OH molecules. So we see an OH here. Um, so we draw it on the phosphate group because this is new to us, or new to you right now, um, whereas this structure shouldn't be. Now, you also be, should be able to label the carbon. So this is an oxygen. This O is, represents oxygen. The C, this C to the right of it is what we call carbon 1, this is carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, and here's the fifth carbon. So it's a five carbon structure and you should be able to do this and you should know, well we'll come back to this, so you should be able to know the carbon uh, structure right here. And then the last thing that you need to know is that the third part of a, nucle of a DNA nucleotide is this nitrogenous base. And this nitrogenous base is one of four options. And so this is the thing that makes each of the four nitrogenous bases different. 
And as a side note, um, this nitrogenous base, these the four nitrogenous bases that we're getting ready to talk about are the same four variations that exist in all forms of life, which is quite interesting that every form of life, from humans to all animals to plants to fungi to protists to the bacteria kingdoms, all of those have um, the this structure of DNA with the same four options for the nitrogenous bases. So we'll talk about that in just a second, but here's another diagram that you will see in the, in the textbook, um, which is perfectly fine um, to, to use and to know that there's a phosphate group, we've got a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Um, but there's just some more detail in this one that we'll come back to. So you, you do need to know both. But when we're drawing them, you can use this as a base unit. We'll add more to this in the future. So let's, I'm just going to go back to this one because it's a little more complicated. It gives us some, something more to talk about. And so when we talk about these four options, um, these four options are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine also known as A T G and C um, okay so those are the four options and that's what makes the four different nitrogenous bases now you need to be able to show how these are linked together um, to make a single strand of um, DNA. So I'm gonna just let's figure out where where I've got everything on this map. Okay. So we'll do that right down here. A single strand of DNA. So um, remember that we've got our deoxyribose. I'm not gonna draw the C's in here. So I don't know if you learned this in chemistry or not, but if we draw a structure like this, when we don't draw letters at the corners, that means it's actually carbon. Um, got our phosphate group and our nit nitrogenous base, which actually just shoots right off. So this is supposed to represent a corner right here and here we've got a nitrogenous base so I'll come back and label those in just a second we've got another nucleotide another I'll draw one more just so we get some repetition but I think you can you could keep drawing these um, for a whole 90 minute period I think they kinda of get boring but here we've got four nucleotides in a row but what we're missing is the nitrogenous base so I'm just gonna go ahead and label um, got A, T, G, and C that's fine whatever it could be two A's, they can repeat. That It doesn't really matter, because um, what we're drawing, what we're talking about now are the um, covalent bonds that bond these nucleotides together to make part of our DNA molecule. This is not a DNA molecule, because D, remember DNA is double-stranded. This is a single strand of um, DNA. And let's point out where the covalent bonds are. Here's a covalent bond. Here's a covalent bond, and here's a covalent bond. Notice that there are three covalent bonds for four nucleotides, because the bond is actually between the molecule, the, between the nucleotides. So these are all covalent bonds that are here in the whitish color. You need to be able to identify where that is, and as, a, as an additional piece of information, we'll come back to this, know that this covalent bond exists between, um, I'll add this just below, so, Covalent bonds exist between carbon 
three of one nucleotide and car sorry carbit um, well in the phosphate group of the next but remember that this phosphate group is bonded to carbon 5 so really when we talk we'll come back to these ideas of fives and threes but we have things that are called five prime ends and three prime ends and it all is based on which what the direction of the sequence is and that'll make that'll become a little more evident when we talk about that in DNA replication okay so these are the covalent bonds you need to be able to outline that so not just label it but tell me a little bit about that covalent bond and um, some detail about that um, the book has a little bit more um, about that that I don't need to go into because you already have that resource. So, um, when you talk about base pairing and complementary bases. Um, so, I'm going to actually, I'm going to remove these because I don't want to keep drawing this thing over and over. We'll just use this model and keep going. All right. So, um, let me let me get myself situated here. All right, so I'm going to use the same color because it's the same molecule. Um, I'm going to point out that on the other side here, we're going to have um, base pairing, the double-stranded um, section here. So, actually, I'm going to, just to help illustrate it, I'm going to, no, I won't. I apologize. So A bonds, so what you need to know is that A bonds with T and C bonds with G. So A bonds to T, T bonds to A, G bonds to C, C bonds to G. Um, and that there are two hydrogen bonds between A and T. So two hydrogen bonds and actually three hydrogen bonds between C and G. And that's really what's holding these nitrogenous bases together. And remember that covalent bonds are, are stronger or greater than hydrogen bonds. So when DNA breaks apart, the first thing it's going to break apart is this bond right here. So the double-stranded section of DNA, um, so this double-stranded section of DNA um, is, I forgot what I was going to say. Here's the double strand. I added it. So this double-stranded DNA is flipped upside down, if you notice that. Um, the directions are different, um, but they're bonded together through these hydrogen bonds. So these covalent bonds between each strand of the DNA, this side on the left that goes up and down this column, where this column are much stronger than the hydrogen bond that links these nitrogenous bases together, um, which comes into key, it comes into um, great importance when we talk about DNA replication, and especially when we've already we've already talked about transcription, and in transcription, this the helicase. If you look back in your notes, the helicase is what's going to break these hydrogen bonds up, separate the DNA. So it's going to throw this strand. Oops, apologies with that. It's going to throw this strand way to this direction and this strand way to the right. Um, and by removing these hydrogen bonds, RNA nucleotides are going to be able to come in um, and create the messenger RNA. Okay. Um, and you need to be able to draw and label a diagram of the molecular structure of DNA. Well, this is the drawing. That you need to do, but remember when draw when they say draw, they're actually meaning draw and label, and they and nicely tell you that this time. So you need to be able to draw and label. Um, so we've got A's, T's, C's, and G's, but remember IB doesn't like that. You need to tell them. You need to make a key um, off to the side somewhere. So here's my key to the drawing: that A equals adenine, adenine, 
T equals thymine, C equals cytosine, and G equals guanine. Okay, so you have to be able to do that. Um, you also should point out that the P is the phosphate group, that um, this sugar is a deoxyribose, that this is a nitrogenous base, we've got hydrogen bonding, we've got the covalent bond. You have to label every single one of these, but you need to label some of these parts. Um, and um, yeah, so that's those are quite a few labels that you could add to our diagram. Um, and um, I just wanted to point out, remember that they're going in opposite directions. So we actually say we can describe this as, um, I guess let me figure out a good place to write this. Okay, I'll put it over here on the right. So we actually say that DNA is anti-parallel. That's how you spell parallel, I think. It looks funny when it's all caps. Um, Yeah, so um, so the the structure of DNA is anti-parallel, and that's really going to come into play when we talk about DNA um, replication in the next um, next video, the next lesson. Okay, um, and I think that's it. Um, no, oh sorry, this drawn label is a simple diagram of the molecular structure of RNA. It's very similar to DNA. Um, and remember that it also has a phosphate group. It's got nitrogenous bases, but different nitrogenous bases. Instead of thymine, it's got uracil. Um, so instead of T, we use a U. And um, the same rules apply, except that when we're when we have when, when we would have put in a T for thymine, we instead put in a U for uracil. Um, and it's single stranded. Um, but it's got a phosphate group and it's got a sugar, but it's not deoxyribose, it's ribose. We draw it the same way because it's still a five carbon sugar. It's those H's and OH's that make ribose different than deoxyribose. Um, and I think that that's, that's it, okay?